In physics, we believe that magnetism and electricity are fundamentally one and the same thing. But we notice that whenever we make magnets, such as this bar magnet here, we always have a north and a south pole. Whereas in electricity, we can have an electron, which is an indivisible unit, which is essentially just a north pole or a south pole. And so since the 1930s, there's been a theory, um, first postulated by Dirac, that um, you can have a, a simple magnetic monopole just a north. And so ever since then, there's been lots of work on this, but these things have never been found to form spontaneously. So when we have two bar magnets um, with a north pole and a south pole, then there's always a right way and a wrong way to arrange them. So, so the north and the south will strongly attract like this, whereas the north and the north will, will repel each other. Um, whereas if you force um, three magnets to meet at a certain point, like in our structure, such as this picture here, then we can put one north and one south in, and, and they're both perfectly happy. But um, if we introduce a third magnet um, from the other direction, then whether we go um, put a north in or we put a south in, then there's always going to be one bond of attraction and one bond of repulsion. So using nanotechnology, uh, we've been able to make a magnetic honeycomb where the bars are only one millionth of a metre long. And this allows us to look at these um, strange frustrated type effects um, actually in a magnetic system. And this is very interesting because magnets have long been used um, in kind of ordered arrays to store information in computer hard disks and magnetic random, random access memory and things like that. But we believe in the future people will be able to exploit these strange collective effects um, to produce new physics and new type of devices. We've made a very simple mock-up of our structure using some bar magnets and some pins uh, and the little arrows uh, point north on each of these magnets. Uh, and this is a little toy model that allows us to illustrate how um, the rules of frustration, which we call the ice rules, work in our lattice. So um, basically when, when each three set of three magnets meet, um, you want a balance of north and south poles, so either two norths and one south, or two south and one north. And as long as that rule is followed, essentially the structure is relatively happy. So there are some bars that we're free to flip, and in flipping we just swap from two north and one south to two south and one north, or vice versa. And so there's no real consequences for other bars, and so this magnet can flip on its own and lead to another stable conformation, which is subtly different, but also um, perfectly stable. On the other hand, there are other bars where uh, essentially you've got the minority pole at each um, vertex, and so by flipping that pole, um, we get three north or three south all coming together, and this is very energetically unfavorable. So on our little toy model with the pins, um, that won't happen, and there'll be a cascade effect of other bars flipping to, to heal those defects. The new thing we've discovered is that when we look at our structures in the uh, magnetic force microscope, uh, by cycling the magnetic field in a certain way, we are able to trap these um, very high energy defects where three north poles all, all point together, and we're able to see these things move as we apply further magnetic fields. So using these uh, new types of uh, magnetic nanostructures, uh, we've been able to realize um, these frustrated effects, and we've been able to force three north poles to come together and sit in a structure uh, which then looks like a uh, south pole all round from the outside. Uh, and so this acts like a magnetic monopole. And I mean, this is a very new and exciting thing that we're able to like look at and play with these structures in much more detail, um, where before this is something that's only uh, been theoretically predicted and then very recently uh, measured in certain structures. This is a very special type of microscope uh, known as a magnetic force microscope. So basically um, our structures uh, are very small, so uh, we need uh, a microscope to be able to image the very tiny north and south poles um, on our bar magnet structures in our, in our honeycomb. The microscope consists of a, a very simple uh, cantilever and on the end there's essentially a bar magnet with a, a north pole on the end of it. Okay? So, this, um, this bar magnet is actually atomically sharp, so, sh so the end of this uh, bar magnet is sharp as an atom essentially. So what happens is um, we actually scan our sample underneath um, this cantilever as it oscillates up and down. So it oscillates up and down and as our sample scans underneath it, so I'm demonstrating here with just a, a very simple bar magnet which was explained earlier. So as it oscillates up and down underneath the sample, when it sees uh, a north pole, for example, 
because there's a north pole on the ends of our tip, it's actually uh, repelled. So the oscillation amplitude gets larger. So when it sees the south pole, it's actually attracted instead. So the oscillation amplitude is actually reduced. The defects um, which we're imaging uh, in, in, uh, in our study is uh, basically three magnetic north poles altogether. So when you scan the tip over this, it sees a very large um, deflection, which enables us to um, identify them quite readily um, in our structures. One of the reasons why I'm really interested in this is because um, from undergraduate days we've been told by, by teachers and lecturers that these fundamental magnetic monopoles cannot exist. You can't find a North Pole or a South Pole on its own. And um, it turns out in our structures we see um, defects which look very similar to a magnetic North or South Pole which can exist on their own um, and act independently as long as they're confined to our artificial uh, honeycomb structure.